Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow 33 bringing you a replay cast of a recent replay on Cordova between J Raccoon and God. That's his name, with two D's and an E. Ye old English God. I, yeah, I guess I'll have to call him that. Anyway, J Raccoon is playing Greckham, while God is playing CISO. So, CISO is a race we yeah it was the race we saw last time. So Grecken versus CISO once again we have this matchup we had the replay last time was also Grecken versus CISO. Though J Raccoon has been doing some shenanigans with race switching recently at least in the games I played against him. So he may be actually going for a different race. I'm not sure. We'll figure out shortly. It looks like he is jumping a CISO t closer to the future. About a minute and a half into the game he is setting it as CISO. So, I'm guessing he's he means to be Grecken, but he's just doing a nice little race switch echo by jumping into the future first. So, closer to the past, his choice is actually going to be Grecken. And he's got himself set up. He does have the Arctic moved out. He does have... Now, oh, the Faro is being built as well. So, he is definitely focusing on both. Probably just using the CISO to scout, and then once the blue time wave comes, it'll no longer be the scout. However, I don't know how that would work well. I mean, the thing is, it's yeah, it's not going to last long. There's only so much meta time that that's actually going to exist. And so I think J.R.R.C. and CISO Scout isn't actually going to be even seen by God before it becomes completely obliterated by that blue time wave. And yeah, it would appear to be the case. The Scout would have ended up probably around here-ish, and it wasn't propagated by any time wave. So yeah. J.R.R.C. is definitely playing Grecken. There is no... It is a Grecken versus CISO matchup. There is no race switching shenanigans from this point on. And... Jericho is going heavily economy. He's getting seven LCRPs as is normal. He will likely be getting more. Gold is going for he's going for a full twelve LCRPs. Incidentally, you can actually build fourteen LCRPs on here. You can sort of offset this by a unit or two or a tile or two, and you can end up building a third RP on each side here. Anyway, he's also building two importers. No QPRPs yet. He likely will be building some factories and maybe some mechs or poss. No, he's building QPRPs. Okay, so he's definitely getting QP. That will increase his options considerably, seeing as QP is useful for pretty much every unit in the game, other than basic infantry and mechs. J Raccoon is also getting some QP, only with 8 LC, though not 12 like God is going for. He also is getting his Octo and very fast Sepi and Faro. So he's going for probably a reef at 2 minutes 30 seconds. God, on the other hand, is going for 5 QP RPs, 2 factories as well, so definitely going heavy on the macro. And apparently Gold is a spring player, uh, the Total Annihilation and or the Total Annihilation Replay Viewer Engine open source project. So he is very likely to be a macro heavy player as a result. And we can see this right now in the style. He does have tons of he has every single point saturated, except like I said, you can kind of shift this a bit to get an extra RP on each side. But he does have pretty much every point saturated on the boxes. He does have two factories very early on, four minute mark. Likely will be building more. He's getting mech and an ATHC. The mech will likely be used to build macrofab, and he's running his marines through the station, the little teleporter station here. And he will be going towards the northeast expansion. While he has another special ops, his special ops is going to J Raccoon's base, and we'll be seeing him. He will be shutting down a couple RPs. J Raccoon is about two minutes down from here. Setting up a reef, actually one reef already, setting up a se second reef further south. The reef at the top is getting advanced structures, so we'll have advanced structures by a 349 mark, 50 mark. And now building a spire, so the spire will be ready by about the 45 mark, the 405 mark, no, actually the 4 minute mark. I forgot that it had built so fast. So yeah, he can start He can start building air units right now if he wants to. Building more QPRPs instead, he will be likely building air units quite soon. Gold is at the 518 mark. He has built a macrofab. He does have like, the factories from before. The importer is still there. He does have ATCs going to the south. And he has the expansion force going towards the east. While another marine looks like it's going to this expansion right here. So his natural here. And another natural expansion. No, the ATC is patrolling natural expansion and patrolling the southwest corner expansion. And the reef at the top has been destroyed by Special Ops, but J. Raccoon, further in the past, does have Faro, Seppi, Faro, Faro, and Seppi coming in to kill off the Special Ops before the reef is destroyed. The reef, however, too far away from any other reef to heal up, but he is able to heal up the Faro and Seppi that defended it. 
So Jericho's assault has been cut short. He has Jericho. Sorry, Gold's assault has been cut short. Jericho has not actually built up any air units though, surprisingly enough, or gotten any additional tech or anything. Getting more reefs though. He's getting a reef close enough to heal the other reef, a mini bubble wrap, and he is getting a ATC here. Incidentally, bubble wrapping. Bubble wrapping is a slightly older strategy for Grecum, where they build three reefs in a small area that allows each reef to heal each other and everything in the area. It's incredibly useful for defense, but it's fallen out of popularity, especially with the newer maps that are kind of larger and don't offer quite as much defense ability. And now, Gold is going back to the 533 mark. He does have, we did see just briefly towards the future, he has an expansion built up here, starting to build up some factories. Yeah, here we are. There's a couple of factories built up in this natural expansion. He doesn't have his northeast expansion taken yet. The Marine seems to have stopped, and he does have... Or sorry, that's just because he's moving through time. And he does have the special ops all attacking, but we saw it get destroyed already. So jumping, he's jumping further back. His macro prep is actually, no, it's starting up right now. It's finished closer to the future. And he does have more HSCs coming in, which you saw before. But his HSCs were being used to patrol around. Jumping back even further, I'm not sure if he's actually doing anything different. He does have the special ops. Yes, he is. He's moving the special ops north, so he's... Trying to attack around, instead of hitting the reef, he is just patrolling around to try to hit the QPRPs just in a roundabout way. j Raccoon jumping back and will likely realize that, but hasn't come up yet. So he does see that the damage has no longer been dealt. I'm not sure if he's suspecting the special ops coming in from a different angle, but that's exactly what it's doing. The Faros and Seppis are going to the same position to attack, so j Raccoon has not become aware of this change in plans yet. Gold, on the other hand, is definitely aware of it. So j Raccoon is aware of it for the future, and j Raccoon has actually jumped forward. He is now aware that it is happening. He is getting gate tech as well. So he's getting credit pointing, sorry. At the south reef, just in case the north reef got attacked ultimately. And God, once again, very near the future. Sorry, very near the future edge. And the timeline started drifting, so that future edge is gonna, not going to be quite as static. But that is... Oh, he's jumping back once again. He has gotten a marine... Or special, sorry, going to the south reef that's going to be building up chronoporting. No, that's not South Reef, that's just the original attack order. But it would be a good idea to go for that South Reef, but I don't think he's aware that that's something that would be a good idea. Three more importers being built towards this area of the base near the station. And Martin coming in from God further in the future. So he's jumped back slightly, and jumping back even further, and this macro web doesn't actually exist, he is... Now this is expansion right now. There we go. He does have the Special Ops coming in and around. He does have... He actually has machinery on his own being built, so that's what he's going for back here. j on the other hand, is at the 548 mark. This is when he started getting Chrono Porting. He's getting a Sepi Pod. He will likely be getting Fire Pods as well pretty soon. Now this is interesting. It's probably going for a Chrono Rush, but it's kind of interesting how he's delayed it somewhat. At this point, if he were to go to Chrono Port, he would actually end up uppercutting quite well. And the Sepi Pod coming in. And no Fire Pod, mind you. The, there's enough money for it, but he has not gone for one yet. Sepipod is going around, will be going towards the west. It will be finding an ATHC, and of course, Sepipods are detectors, so it doesn't matter if the ATHC cloaks, however, the ATHC will be able to deal enough damage to kill the Sepipod, I think. No, he, the ATHC will barely die, and of course, cloaking doesn't actually do anything, except it does delay it slightly. It delays the attack cycle slightly. But, go ahead, getting this expansion towards the middle, he is still getting a ton of expansions. He has a marine over here that will be expanding up to the northeast as well. His main base, he has five ATCs, he has tons of Mars queued, he has enough importers to support it all, and he has factory, of course, here. He surprisingly doesn't have many more factories, and I would expect more of them. Farbots coming in from J Raccoon at 754 mark, they are coming, t they are not stopping for the ATC, they are attacking, and J Raccoon has jumped back a bit, not Corona pointing back, he's just jumped back a bit. He's at the 556 mark, probably noticing the special ops right here. Special ops has escaped, it did end up just aborting the attack on the QP RPs and escaped completely. ATTs, this is when they were scouting the bottom left expansion, the southwest expansion there, and that macrofab has been put up there, it's still there. So God is coming in with five ATTs towards the eight minute mark, but he's jumping back about two minutes. Double checking the unplayable pass, I don't know if he is aware that chronoporting might occur yet. Jericho has not actually chronoported anything yet. He has more attacks going in the future, and this is when the Firepods were attacking the Natural Expansion. The 830 mark, the Firepods attack the Natural Expansion, throw one of the RPs, will start throwing other RPs as well. And so the RPs of this Natural Expansion have been, right now, blocked off. God is jumping back about two minutes from then to figure out what to, probably figure out what to do, but likely will be sending in some force to attack. He is actually expanding a bit 
more heavily in this area, or was planning to, the Marine seems to have just decided not to. I'm not sure if that's just because of the timeline update hasn't occurred properly yet. But anyway, the Far Pods, regardless, are coming in. We'll be dealing a ton of damage by the 908 mark. They've pretty much destroyed the entire expansion. And J. Raccoon jumping back a bit further. He has actually, like I said, has not chronoported anything yet. He does have the Far Pods to chronoport with, and I'm not sure if he's just trying to figure out, plan out his chronoport route or what. Mars coming in from the north, going down the south roads here. And they appear to be all converging on this expansion. And there are Faro. Faro's coming in and Seppi's coming in towards this expansion. Enough for two dyads and we'll be able to get rid of this. The ATSC is going to be spreading on Seppi Pod. Seppi Pod has to move back a bit to repair. The ATSC will not be able to kill the reefs in time though. So the Seppi Pod is in a good position. And this is when the Faro Pods originally attacked. The ATSC is coming in. This, this is how God saves himself. He... That's not really bad. And he came in and came in with ATHCs. That is quite an effective way of getting rid of the Farpods. So the Farpods have been, well, probably will be destroyed. It looks like it's near the unplayable pass. They will not be able to survive this attack. And they aren't attached to any Arcticus, so it would take, well, this much chrono energy, which is quite a bit for Jericho right now. Actually, Jericho doesn't have enough orders to do it. It would be two orders to do, but he hasn't decided to do it yet. He does have more Seppi Pods, however, and he has. This heavy puck here as well, but like I said, he's probably not using it. He's not getting the far pods out of there. I'm a bit surprised. But God's ATHCs actually aren't staying back here. God's moved his ATHCs further. He doesn't appear to be attacking them as he was earlier. It's rather bizarre. I'm not sure why he opted to do that. Jumping forward two minutes, he does have Mar tanks at the main base. Probably just figured no point going for the far pods when he can take the main base down. Mar tanks going for the main base. They are focusing on the Arcticus a bit too much. They should probably be attacking other things, but. Wait, what? Oh, it looks like Jericoon has actually managed to get rid of that Martank. Yes, he has! He does have a semi-pod distracting the Martank, stopping it from destroying the base and ultimately killing it. But, of course, the problem is this expansion down here, the Martank is dealing a ton of damage, destroying one of the dyads. Sevi is going to be attacking it, but to no avail. Faro is staying back and will be likely slaughtered very soon. Yes, it will be killed in no time at all, the Martank, making short work of that Faro, while... The rest of the attack occurs in the main base. The Martank attacking the main base, like I said, was distracted by a Seppi Pod, and there is Tornod coming in as well to deal with the Faro Pods. The Faro Pods, of course. Oh no, the Faro Pods are not destroyed, right? Because the ATC decided, forget that Faro Pod, let's go for the main base. And that may not have been a terribly bad idea. Three Faro Pods coming in, however, to take care of those ATCs, and they will be able to take care of them in no time at all. So those ATCs are going down, not particularly successful in their attack. By the way, Articus is due to tech, so. Oh, but it's just out of range of the Arcticus, so they don't see it, but here we are, but Chronoport finally happening, and we have a Chronoport Farpod in the main base attacking the QPRPs. By the way, Gold has plenty of QP right now, so it's not a big deal. The LC would be a huge bottleneck, but QP's not a problem. But that's probably not the biggest deal. The biggest deal would be if that Farpod manages to get in and actually deal some serious damage on things other than RPs. So those... Well, that loss could be pretty major if it actually ends up being a loss beyond just a few key PRPs that aren't super necessary right now. Jay Raccoon is putting himself in an interesting spot. He doesn't have great map control or map presence, but he does have chronoporting, which, as has been shown before, can really turn the tide of a match. However, the fact that he doesn't have a whole lot of economy is going to be a problem. He does have Seppi Pods coming in, which will help out to deal with this, and... The Tornog, there's Tornog from God coming in to try to deal with the Farbots, or help deal with the Farbots by detecting them. No dedicated anti-air though, no mechs, no frigates, no lancers even. Although lancers would be the easiest one to go for at this point. And like I said, not many factories, I'm a bit surprised God hasn't built more factories. While Martin's coming from the south, will be assaulting that reef, and Tornod will be able to detect the far pod, but be no avail. The semi pod destroys it handily, while Martank further south will be destroyed by the combination of everything. So this blue time wave is carrying the damage at the far pods deal, and it looks like, according, well, it looks like the heuristics show that there's actually a fair amount of damage being dealt. There is a positive change, lots more light blue, so J. Raccoon definitely dealing a lot more damage than he was in the last iteration of that part of the timeline. But we won't find out until the blue time wave comes just how much damage was dealt, or unless some of the players decides to go back there and check out what's happening. God doesn't seem to be too interested. It's not a huge amount of damage as far as you can tell. It is a change, though. Definitely always worth checking Flashing Red on the timeline. Always check out Flashing Red on the timeline. Just bookmark bookmark where you are. Oh, here. Jericho is, jump, is jumping back. See what's going on there. And the Far Pod is going to be able to deal a fair amount of damage. And it actually managed to kill off two of the RPs. 
but not enough. It looks like the Farbots were ultimately destroyed. So J. Raccoon, his assault wasn't super successful, but he does have a lot of Farbots now, or three Farbots, which in the right spot can be a lot. So if he goes in, this expansion has already been destroyed. Not worth working on, but the expansion to the northeast may be worth working on. Really the main base right now, because like I said, Golan has map presence, but he doesn't have a lot of map control. He has a lot of units around the map, but he doesn't have a lot of resource processors or anything like that. So he's not in the most secure position. He does, however, have some control over where Jerakun can move. He has lots of units everywhere, which does mean Jerakun has to be a lot more careful how he gets his units around. Blackbird's coming in to attack the reef, and another Blackbird coming in from the northeast will be attacking this directly. The RPs, I should say, directly. And hitting a QP RP, this is, of course, something more important for Jerakun because of the chrono porting, but also because he's lower on QP than he is in LC. And it looks like the, R the RPs actually do manage to get back here, or at least the RPs would manage to get back here, but it looks like... Yes, yeah, some of the RPs were destroyed by the Farbot attack. All but two, actually. Wow, that's amazing. So, all but two of the RPs are destroyed by the Farbot attack, and the Farbot's coming in to follow up. We'll be able to kill killing the Mar. We'll be able to kill off the... For some reason, attacking the frigate. But, anyway, we'll be able to kill off the RPs eventually. The Blackbird attacking the RP is still dealing a fair amount of damage, but that's something that Jericho can easily deal with. He does have Chevy Pots coming in, and they will be able to deal with them no problem. So this Blackbird is not going to be able to do much at all. The Mar tank is actually coming in as well. But it looks like Jericho has jumped back a bit. Chrono putting back his... Probably the units around here. God has to deal with this, of course. And he has Frigates coming in, but... Well, at least the Frigates we saw before. They aren't going to do too much without detection. But now we see that there is actually... Or there was detection. And it was destroyed. So that was still useless. These RPs will be going down very soon. But Frigates coming in the main base. Try to destroy it. Blackbird's coming around. And two more pairs of Faros and Seppies coming in to try to deal with what's going on down here. Fairly useful, but still kind of tricky to work with because, of course, Faros and Seppies are not the strongest of units, but if if Jared can keep Gold distracted from other parts of the map by doing this, then he will actually be able to come out ahead. And it looks like the Chronoport likely occurred in the main base. Still attacking the main base. And yes, here we are. This is where the Chronoport happened. Farpon, however, getting destroyed by turrets and mechs. That was kind of a waste of a Chronoport. I think that Jared will likely be aborting that. No, he's not. He's changing around the direction, trying to figure out if there's any turrets around here. Now, Chronoporting back to deal with what's going on. Getting rid of one of the Marines. Probably will be getting rid of another one. I'm not sure if these Marines were used to build RPs. Martin coming out from the Macrofab will not be attacked. More Marines getting killed. So a lot of the Marines getting killed. And a tank inside the main base getting killed as well. Or getting attacked heavily. It may not necessarily die, but it likely will. Jericho is not at that point in time to control and especially in the unplayable pass, so he couldn't if he wanted to. Tornado Torber in the main base destroying what's coming in. More Faros getting killed, but Sigfod's coming to destroy that that Tornado. And Martin's coming in at Attacking the Seti Pod, dealing some damage, but Martangs do not have a very good anti-air attack. So they will be dealt with very quickly. And here we have the Faro. Seppies are not doing too much yet, but Jericho will likely turn them into a duo, or two pair of, well, two pairs very quickly. Use that to regenerate. God jumping back a bit further, he does have, well, his main base is actually getting heavily assaulted. And he himself is getting gate tech, so he will have the ability to chronoport back and start dealing with these chronoport attacks directly. And he does have... No, actually, he's, run, he's running out of his economic advantage. He does, however, have more RPs that are active. This northeast expansion is fully active. His main base has been drained almost completely. And Jericoon's main base has almost been drained completely. Jericoon, however, has this section here that's a bit... Well, that's possibly going to be expansion, but he hasn't actually used an expansion yet. The Farbot's still dealing damage, destroying another importer. Well, destroying an importer. Presumably, he's just will be destroying more importers. Destroying an RP, and it is, however, not cloaked, so Jerakun will be losing it to a frigate that's just popped out of the macro path. But the frigate itself taking heavy damage at 6 health after that was done because the frigate was on the ground was being attacked originally. Semi pods, more semi pods being prepared, so Jerakun managing to just build up what he can and getting RPs here, getting an Arcticus here in the southwest expansion and getting some RPs, like says. Well, he will have the ability to expand there quite safely, provided that. God isn't fully aware of it, but God, like I said, is kind of distracted by all the chrono ports going on. He is trying to assault the main base, but it looks like he's probably given up on that assault now. Frigate coming in will be intercepted by five sepi pods. Well, not even five. I mean, one sepi pods all it takes to kill at six health. Lancer and Tank trying to defend this expansion here. Probably going to be using it eventually. That is God's expansion. And J. Raccoon, about a minute further in the future. His main base is almost completely exhausted, but he is... Starting to expand here a bit more in the southwest base. The well, the middle middle west base is being just destroyed. Everything coming into it from God is being destroyed by the Sepi Pods. 
Jericoon did lose a far however, which means that he won't be able to deal with the ground as effectively, but regardless, no, the mechs here are going for this base, not going for here, not going for the Middle West Natch, or Middle West Expansion, they're going for the Southwest base instead, attacking the Arcus, and Go is likely to change that exact movement. He is getting a frigate in there, however, he has avoided the Middle East Expansion this time around, he is just going straight for the Southwest Expansion, well, it'll be a different frigate, but regardless, he is doing what he can to get rid of it, Sebi is coming in and will be able to destroy it, no problem. Go jumping back, seeing he already is aware of this Farpod attack, and Jerakun has not actually sent any more Chronoports since that this was their unplayable pass we already saw. So Jerakun is now just trying to seize control of the rest of the map. He definitely has this area handled. I'm not sure why he's building more there or isn't. He does have Oshpods to help defend the Southwest Main, but the Middle West expansion, Bit Surprising has tried to defend it a bit better. And God isn't actually expanding towards the Middle Eastern expansion, which is a bit odd. He did have that earlier, and Bit Surprising hasn't gone to take it again. Does have more turn odds and lancers? He doesn't. He has actually a fair amount of resources, but it looks like his gate tech was aborted. Got, probably didn't have enough resources earlier in the past to use it, so he ended up not ended up actually building that tech. A bit unfortunate for him. He will have to rebuild it if he wants to use Chrono Quarters. So at this point, Jericoon is the only one who actually has any any sort of gate tech, any sort of Chrono Porting. So he's more controlled with the timeline. But of course, Jericoon is. Well, he's not quite as much control over the map, but he does actually have a fair amount of control over the map at this point. Even... Yeah, he actually has his airiness, his air force is pretty strong, kind of small, but pretty strong. And he does have enough units to be able to just stop everything that Jericoon... Sorry, that God tries to throw at him. Because God is throwing a bunch of units at him, and Jericoon's managed to keep his units alive long enough. Although he did lose a few seven claws in the battle up here, and he's losing some more units down here. He lost an Octo down here. Not huge, but still, it's, it's still resources. Building more Farpods in his main base, he doesn't have them used yet, but he does have a small Chronoport happening with the Semipods to help get rid of the Lancer that came in and the Tronauts that came in as well. So he will be able to save that Octo that was destroyed earlier, but the, but Jer but God has just completely abandoned that attack. A Martan coming in will be destroyed quite handily, and Semipods probably possibly going to help out, but decided against it. So Jerakun, not got much to worry about right now. This Tronaut coming in the main base, that will be something he has to deal with. Though he's not restricting anything from that reef, so it's not as big of a deal. And both players are kind of getting into a bit of a grind right now. I mean, none of them have enough resources to really push an advantage. Though God definitely has a resource advantage. And he actually has managed to get Gate Tech ultimately. He did re-research it, so he does have Gate Tech now. Farpods getting rid of the Tornad, and... Because Tornads and Farpods are both bombers, by the way. So, two Farpods will be able to kill the Tornad easily. And Seven Pods are going to be able to destroy that expansion towards the eastern center of the map. While well, Lancers come in towards the Middle West section of the map, seeing there's nothing there, though it's not going to really slow it down much. Going towards the Southwest corner of the map, and God will be able to see what's going on, and probably nothing's going to happen, because really, that's a very weak Lancer. Not much damage will be able to be dealt from it before it ultimately dies. God, further in the future, is going to be able to do very little. While well, Jericoon assaults the main base, he's going for the final attack. This is likely to finish the game if it works out, and it looks like it probably will. God does have Chrono Porter, or because of Gate Tech, but he doesn't have any Chrono Porters built up yet. This base doesn't have any, and the Middle Eastern Expansion does not have any either. He does have a Lancer in the middle of the map. This is the Lancer we saw earlier. That will be dead. Tornados, this is about two minutes down from when we were focused before. That will be dead too. This is the Fire Pods that we saw earlier. And this is... Yeah, this is going to be a very quick little end here. Jericoon just putting the finishing blow on God right now. But God did a very good job nonetheless. He did a very good job maxing up early on and putting quite a bit of pressure on J-Raccoon. If Jericho didn't manage to get that gate tech, he would have ended up losing. Although, it, like I said, God really did have a massive economic advantage. He really should be should have been pushing it more, getting more expansions, and re-expanding more often. But that is, he is a bit of a newer player. It's something that has to get used to just in general. And I'm just a bit surprised because he is a spring player, and the thing with Spring and Total Annihilation and Spring Commander is that rebuilding expansions is common. You just typically do that. It's a very expected thing that you're going to lose your metal extractors and you have to rebuild them. Heavy Cruiser coming in from God, though. He is going to try to go out the bang, at least. Heavy Cruisers are not the most powerful unit in the game, of course. They are still... They have to be balanced, obviously. But they are still quite powerful as it is. No nukes, though. He has no weaponry or anything, so he's not going to be able to do any nukes. He will... However, be losing it quickly to the Pods. And Tornado as well going down to Pods. Jumping back slightly, this is Jericho we're focusing on, by the way. God will be... Well, he will be losing this to Sebi Pods, and nothing's really changing. Nothing needs to change. Gold's the only one who needs to change anything right now, and not sure what he really could change at this point. 
really everything he could change is in the unplayable or immutable past. It's already gone. There isn't much more he can do. This base is going to be going down. And God has GG'd. So that is the game. That was a rather interesting game. And I'm not sure if there's... Yeah, Jerrigan's pointing out that God is maybe newer. But it looks like... Yeah, I Jerrigan is pointing out the casting I'm doing right now. But yeah, God is a newer player. And he, regardless, he's doing truly well for a new player. I mean, this is this is quite well done. So, really, it's just a matter of getting a bit more macro in the future, but also, as he pointed out, it's macro in the future. And getting a bit more macro in general, like, I mean, yeah, you can undermine. You can definitely be undermined. That is one thing that's always been kind of a concern, and as Jerry is pointing out. You can get undermined in this game. People can go back in time and destroy your RPs or just knock them into closed mode and stop you from harvesting. But it doesn't mean that you have no way of retaliating or there's no reason to actually macro up regardless. I mean, you don't want to have a lot of floating resources. A, a little bit of floating resources? I mean, it's not quite StarCraft or any other RTS where you have to pretty much keep your resource usage low. And God has earned. He already GG'd, so... He, it's not like Sarka, for example, you have to keep your resource users low. You want to make sure you have as few resources as possible. You do not want to stock up in resources unless you're going for an expansion or something. In Akron, you want to keep a bit of a buffer in case you get undermined so that you don't lose a lot of units. But at the same time, it is still worth spending your money. Because if you don't have units at all, then you won't be able to get out of it. And the thing is, a counterexample would be if you have units at the point that you're getting attacked, if you're getting attacked in the past, especially if there's a chronoport attack to undermine you, if you had built units back during that time and you, they were set up to defend, then you would end up not actually getting undermined, so the units would end up being causally consistent. That's just something, a bit of food for thought. But anyway, that was an interesting game, much better than the last one. And that was... That was interesting. That was well done. I quite enjoyed watching that. So thank you for watching, and that will be all for tonight. So have a good night, everyone.